Our speaker today is Haydar Rada. He is a professor of electrical engineering and computer engineering at MSU. He serves as the, the director of the Connected Autonomous Networked Vehicles for Active Safety, also known as CANVAS, we love acronyms here, program, and also the director of the Wireless and Video Communications Laboratory at Michigan State University. Rada is an MSU graduate. He received a bachelor's degree here in electrical engineering just a few years ago. Uh, he uh, earned his PhD at Columbia University. Dr. Rada has served in key industry positions at Philips, where he worked in the video communications research department, and at Bell Laboratories, where he worked in the areas of digital communications, image processing, and broadband multimedia. Professor Rada has been an I, is an IEEE fellow. He's also received many distinguished titles and awards, including the Philips Research Consulting Scientist and Fellow, Google Faculty Research Award twice, Bell Labs Distinguished Member of the Technical Staff. He helped pioneer the rollout of digital TV in the United States, developed key aspects of internet video streaming, and he holds 30 US patents. The topic he's gonna to cover today, I think is extremely important. And if I might make a small analogy, uh, Matt, if, if you think about this hurricane that's heading toward Florida, just imagine if the leadership of that state had not been looking at the horizon and warning the people in the state of that hurricane which is about to hit. In the same way, in just a few years, one of the major, perhaps the major industries in this state is going to be hit by another hurricane called autonomous vehicles. And it's absolutely important that the research universities in the state be prepared to support that industry uh, through work like Professor Robbins. Thank you so much, Steve. Appreciate that. Um, so today I just want to give you a, a very high level overview of MSU's program in autonomous uh, vehicle research and actually we'll talk about student engagement as well. Uh, I'll try to keep it very brief. I was asked to keep it less than 10 minutes. You know, we professor cannot talk less than 50 minutes, so that's the duration of the class, but we'll, I'll do my best. Uh, so we have two sets of activities within the program, both research and student engagement, and frankly these two activities are so intertwined we cannot even separate them right now. So I'll go over both and you know to start the, the talk I thought maybe the most appropriate thing is to show the cornerstone and the centerpiece if you will of our activities right now which is uh, what we call the Canvas vehicle autonomous vehicle platform. Um, I really want to take this opportunity to and nobody have put me up to this but I want to thank President Simon and Vice President Shu for providing us the support and of course Vice President uh, Satish Otpa and also Provost Jun Yuat. So, um, and many other people actually have helped us a lot to establish and start this program. So, uh, as you could tell, the, the vehicle looks very spartan. Actually, we get much more compliments about its uh, artwork than the actual technology we're, we're developing. <laughs> Uh, so we have anywhere from, you know, uh, Governor Snyder to Lieutenant Governor taking picture with it and, and I'll stop at that. So. <laughs> uh, so I thought it would be good to start with a high level architecture of what does it take to really build an autonomous vehicle and this is really serving as a blueprint for us. So any autonomous vehicle you need to start with uh, a set of sensing functions. Typically you have cameras, uh, lidars, radars, I'll talk about lidars in a minute. Once the vehicle senses its environment, then it could process the data and then it has to recognize this environment. Uh, typically, or more specifically, the key object that need to be recognized, things like pedestrians, of course, other vehicles, uh, bicycles, any kind of cyclists, you know, animals, and so on and so forth, also activities. Once we achieve a level of recognition, then the vehicle uh, has to do planning. Basically, it has to that has to plan the next step, you know, should it stop, should it change lane, should it uh, slow down, and so on. So those, you know, uh, functions really represent very high level architecture of what does it take to put an autonomous vehicle together. The two boxes between recognition and planning represent what we call truly really the brain. Uh, you may have heard about, of course, the area of artificial intelligence. This is where artificial intelligence resides within the vehicle. And there is a very important emerging area known as deep learning, that's where uh, a lot of the research goes on in there. Of course, the vehicle uh, could use, and in fact, it needs some form of mapping. So there is a whole kind of research going on, actually how to provide mapping functionalities for autonomous vehicles. 
Now, this whole functionality, again, uh, uh, put it together, we have an autonomous vehicle platform, but there is also another important component, which is com the communication. Vehicles now going to be able to communicate with each other. So we have a couple of forms of communication, either vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, or sometimes even vehicle-to-infrastructure communication. So um, MSU is actually has very strong expertise, in fact, for many decades, and that was one of the main motivation for us to really launch the program. Uh, in areas like radars and antenna design, sensor fusion, uh, machine learning, and so on and so forth. So it was frankly very easy for us to put the resources together and build this program. And again, thank you to the thanks to the administration for providing us with the resources to enable us to start this program. Uh, so the vehicle itself right now is equipped with three types of sensors. Actually, there are other types, but I just want to highlight those three types: you know, cameras, uh, radars, and lidars. One of the things that is very exciting in this new era is uh, LADARs, actually. LADARs, they basically a laser version of radar. They're active center, they send laser beams, and then they sense and collect data about the environment. So I want to show you, actually, a video of uh, what we've been able to do within the MSU campus. Uh, so this is uh, going, uh, using the LADAR on the vehicle, uh, driving on the West Circle. And you could see we were able to capture a very precise and very interesting 3D representation of the environment. And you can see here the MSU library, uh, the museum, in very minute, uh, you know, in a, actually a couple of seconds, we're going to see the, this building that we're sitting right now. Um, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, it cannot see inside the building, but just outside the building. Uh, the, the model that's creating is very powerful to the extent that we're able to show an aerial view. Obviously, the vehicle is not really hovering on the top of the scene. It's actually just following that dotted white lines, as you see in there. So uh, this is actually, again, one of those very inter uh, exciting and interesting technologies that have been de developed to enable autonomous driving. Um, another interesting thing that we've done that I would like to show you, which is something very special for people who live in Michigan, wanted to show the feasibility of doing autonomous driving on the snow. So we took the vehicle actually to a racetrack in, in Mason, uh, you, uh, a very conveniently called Spartan uh, 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 race, Raceway, right? So um, uh, the students actually um, trained the vehicle for a relatively long time and were able actually without, I should add, without using any cameras, were able to keep the vehicle driving autonomously on the track. In fact, I could say that the vehicle did a better job than the students when it was driving. They, they were slipping all over the place, and when they were trying to get the vehicle out of the racetrack because of very strong slope, they actually could not do it, and they had to do many tries. But the vehicle was very capable of actually staying within the track. So uh, the other very interesting technology we're working on, this is work by Professor Jamin Glu and some of his students, which is pedestrian detection. Of course, this is very core for safety, and we've done a lot of work actually on campus, in fact, uh, and you could see in here, this is uh, an example where we're able to, to capture pedestrian, not only walking, but also pedestrian or you know, people or students who are riding on bicycles or motorcycles. And uh, we have actually a video that I would like to show also. Uh, uh, you could see this video actually is running in, in real time, captured around uh, the campus. And it's doing a very good job, actually. In fact, we believe that we are probably not only uh, at, at the state of the art, but way beyond the state of the art in terms of the accuracy. Uh, we're about 97% accuracy right now, but we'd like to get to 100%. And this is really where the research has to go, and we cannot tolerate, of course, in this kind of application, any, you know, um, any mis, you know, misdetection of, of pedestrian. When you talk about sort of, sort of accuracy, other technologies would see a thing but not whether it's a car or a bike, or that's the level of, of sophistication of this technology. Because right now, when you see some of the accidents, they just see a, they can't tell a truck from a tree. This, this is really extraordinary in its capacity to tell the nature of what's there and then theoretically develop the, the decision-making capacity to know what you would do if they're different. That. Yeah, actually, that no, and, and, okay. and actually, on, on that note, in fact, which we're not highlighting, not to confuse the video, if you look at the right side of the video, there are 30 objects that have been actually classified and, and uh, segmented. 
So we're just focusing on the pedestrian, but it actually could do anything from the road, the trees, the vehicle. So there are a total of, of 30 objects. You could see there are 30 classes actually being. Uh, and again, this is really kind of at the beginning of this research, but we really hope to achieve much better results as we move on. Um, uh, the other thing we're doing is actually this, what we call it sensor fusion in particular. And here we're bringing together uh, what we call the visible spectrum, which is regular camera with thermal cameras. Now, thermal cameras are very good in seeing things during the night, of course. And the idea here, there'll be different uh, lighting conditions. You know, during the day, probably the uh, visible spectrum work well and the regular cameras work well in terms of detecting pedestrian, but during the night, the thermal cameras probably will do better. In all cases, we're working on infusing these two different technologies and uh, to achieve much better detection of, of different objects. This work is being done by Professor Arun Ross and his group. Uh, we're also working on detecting wolf animals. Of course, that's going to be very important for deer, uh, as well. Probably have seen one or two during the fall, especially. Uh, and uh, this is actually very interesting work that it's uh, something called correlation filters, and uh, it's basically there is a template of any animal that you're trying to detect. You try to search for it in a in a scene, and then uh, it could uh, detect it uh, relatively easily. Uh, other very important area working on uh, is in the radar area. Uh, we, one of our most important conclusion, I believe, so far is that radar going to play a very pivotal role in autonomous driving because of many reasons. In particular, because of the fact that it's much more resilient than other sensors in very severe uh, conditions. So, for example, if you have very heavy snow or you know fog, then radar will not probably work. If you have you know, some you know, dark conditions or you don't have sufficient lighting, then the cameras will not work. So we were focusing a lot on radar research actually to detect even pedestrian. Radar typically use, usually used just to detect objects. It does not really know anything about what type of object. This is showing an example that's been worked on uh, by Professor Jeff Nanzer and his group, where we are actually looking for signature for pedestrians right now. You could see these periodic signal actually uh, represent a very basic characteristic of people walking. And uh, we call this signal micro Doppler uh, signal. And these signals, again, are used as, as a signature right now to detect pedestrian. In fact, we're working on, on even detecting animals using radar. Uh, the other interesting uh, example I would like to show you today is the example which has to do really with active safety. Uh, in fact, this is right in front of the, the College of Engineering. We rented uh, a U-Haul. This is something actually we did. And there is a, the car uh, next to it. You could see it's, it's being blocked by the U-Haul and cannot uh, see a pedestrian that going right in front of the U-Haul. So we're working on this uh, uh, vehicle to vehicle sensor fusion where the U-Haul has a camera transmitting the pedestrian object to the other vehicle so the other vehicle could see and then we'll be able to stop in time. So this is part of the connected uh, research within you know, Canvas. Okay, so uh, just to put things in context a little bit in terms of our progress, actually we basically following a very natural progression in terms of our research. We really started with the sensing a couple of years ago. Uh, we've spent this past year uh, focusing on the recognition, and we're hoping by the end of this academic year, actually we have the full uh, puzzle solved, if you will, in terms of uh, building the foundation for, for this very important year. And I really would like to echo uh, what Vice President uh, Steve Shu mentioned. Uh, we're really, and literally, in the most revol revolutionary period an era of the automotive industry uh, since the invention of the vehicle. And again, what we really feel is we're building the foundation right now and we believe this research is going to go on for you know, a couple of decades probably into the future. So uh, the other, uh, I would just have a few slides I want to show you about student engagement and it's really a very integral part of, of our research effort. Uh, it's been so overwhelming actually since we announced conference in terms of the student uh, response and reaction and wanted to be involved in this. The students, in fact, even formed their own club. They call it Canvas SOAR. SOAR stands for Student Organized Autonomous Research. And uh, we've been providing actually very practical training. And these students, in fact, they've been building their own sensors like radars and so on. And we're so proud of them because they've been actually involved in uh, international competitions and I'll show you some of that. Just to give you an insight about the, the breakdown in terms of these students, you can see 80% of the students in the club right now, they are between electrical, computer engineering, computer science, and engineering. And we hope actually to get other uh, you know, engineers involved, and there are other engineers. In fact, I get requests from students 
across the campus from com arts, business, from different you know, colleges to, to be involved in this program. Uh, this is actually showing our students uh, who made it uh, in this very visible international stage that was organized by NHTSA. Uh, they are among the very top, uh, top teams in the world. You can see our team, uh, the team from uh, Japan, team from Germany and other countries and MSU team is among the best in the world right now in this area. Uh, other wonderful thing happened to us, which is uh, uh, the Society of Automotive Engineers and General Motor uh, launch uh, an auto drive competition uh, last year and they selected only eight schools in all of North America and MSU is among those eight schools to participate in this three-year competition and I would like to add actually MSU is the only Big Ten school in this competition. Uh, another interesting uh, work that we, we're trying to do actually which is uh, a form of outreach uh, this has to do with the, the value of autonomous driving for people with disabilities. And we've been actually contacted by the Michigan Protection and Advocacy Service Group who uh, are very interested in this and they want to, us, to work with us actually to see how could we basically put their needs and their requirements into our design from the very beginning. I had the opportunity and really the pleasure of meeting with them a couple of times so far and we look forward to work with them. Uh, more and more into the future. So uh, with that, I'll stop and thank you so much again for, for your time.